Hey everybody, it's Coach Rowe Tuesday night, with a Tuesday night message for you guys. You know what, I'm really excited about this message. I'm, I'm really looking forward to sharing this message with you guys because we're going to talk about the power of intention. You know, because as we know, the new year's coming, uh, the end of this year's coming, the new year's coming, the new year's resolutions. And I want to help give you some ideas, six tips to maybe help you get, to, to not just maybe help you, but to set you up to succeed in 2020 and get off to the right foot. But before I do that, let me share with you a little bit what I do. You know, a lot of people say, Coach Rowe, what is it that you do? Well, here's what I know. A lot of people have a, a life coach to help them live life. I'm a lifesaver. I'll help you save your life. And how do I do that? I do that by helping you get the most out of life and not wasting it. Because what I realize is we're only given so many seconds in a day, and I want you to get the most out of them and live the best life you can and not waste, waste them. And that's my commitment to you guys, and that's why I do these is to, to help make a difference and to give you some tips and, and ideas to help you live the healthiest life you could possibly live. So like I said, tonight we're going to talk about the power of intention. And here's what I know. Here's what I want you to know, that if you need help, if, you, if you're struggling, if you're going through some tough, you, you, there's some obstacles that you can't overcome, uh, there's going to be a link with a calendar in, in the in comments. And feel free to give me set a time, and I'll give you a call, and I'll talk to you for free. You know, to see if I can help you overcome some of those challenges that, you, that you're having because I really want you to succeed. So like, hey, let's get right down to it, right? We're going to talk about the power of intention, how to keep your resolution for good, your resolution for good. You know, it's the new year, the time to reflect on your aspirations and set meaningful goals to improve your health and happiness. Although many people have good intentions of starting the new year right, very few follow through according to a study by author and psychologist, Richard Wiseman. Here's what he said. He said his research found that 52 of resolution makers were confident they'd achieve their goals, yet only 12% succeeded. So out of 52% that they were positive they'd be able to do it, they were confident that they'd be able to do it, only 12% succeeded. And what was their secret? What was the 12%? What were they able to do? And that's what I'm going to share with you guys. I'm going to give you six points that those 12% were able to do to help them succeed so you can become one of the 12%. Those who took meaningful steps to achieve their resolutions, setting step, here's what they did. They set step-by-step -step goals or they told friends and family, for example. And because of that, they were far more likely to achieve their desires than those who made no specific commitments. But now I want to caution you on this. When you tell your friends and your family, you got to choose the right people that you want to tell. Because if you tell the wrong people and they don't have the same goals and desires as you and they don't want to uh, achieve the same thing that you want to achieve, or even if they don't, if they don't have your best intentions in mind, if they don't want you to succeed, they're going to do anything they can to drag you down. Because most people want to see you get ahead in life as long as you don't get ahead of them. And if they see you getting healthy and if they see you changing your lifestyle and, and living better and, and, and working on your mindset and reading positive things and feeding your mind and feeding your body, and that gives them no excuse not to do it. So what you have to do is you have to really pick your circle of who you're going to talk to when you, go, when, you, when you share your goals and your dreams with people. Because some people are going to lift you up and some people are going to pull you down. So if you really want to see results this year, it's critical that you set your goals with sincerity and set yourself up for success. You really got to want to do it. You really have to want to do it. If it's just one of these things, hey, it's the new year, I'm going to set a new resolution, don't waste your time. You know, if you join the gym just because it's the first of the year and you're going to quit in three weeks, save your money. You know, I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what you need to know. You can't just, you can't just buy a membership at the gym and get healthy. You have to show up. You just can't say you want to lose weight and live a healthy lifestyle and stop at every fast food stop. There's changes that you're going to have to make. So let's get going. Number one is you have to get specific. See, here's, here's what I know. A common mistake people make is, they, is setting big general goals, like I'll be healthier, instead of making your resolution specific with a tangible, achievable outcome. Rather than saying, I want to lose weight, you have to determine that amount, how much exactly you want to lose and why you are losing it and what you will do once you hit your goal. Now, I'm going to share this with you guys. See, a lot of people, real quickly, I just want to tell you between a gain goal and a pain goal. The last thing you want to do is set a, a pain goal. 
A pain goal is something that you're going to run from, and once you get far enough away from it, you're going to stop. That's why we see people yo-yo dieting all the time because they want to lose weight. They might have a wedding to go to. They they might be in a wedding. You know, they might be going to a, a, a high school or a college reunion or whatever it is, and they want to get in shape. Uh, or maybe they're looking for a, you know for a spouse or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, so they start losing the weight. So so they they go. That's a pain goal, and once they get it, once the wedding's over, once the once the uh, they meet that significant other. Once, once they go to that reunion, they just go back to gaining the weight. Why? Because it's a pain goal. Pain goals don't last. I don't want you to do a pain goal. I want you to set up yourself, you set up with a, set yourself up with a gain goal, something that's going to keep you going. Wait, even when you reach your goal, it's just, it's a continuous, never ending goal. For example, maybe you want to see your kids grow up. Better yet, maybe you want to be able to run around in the yard and play football or baseball or, or whatever it is. You know, just play with the kids. Or maybe you want to be healthy enough to play with your grandchildren instead of sitting there watching them run around when you're sitting on a rocking chair too tired to get up or too overweight to get up when you could be out there running around with them. Maybe you want to see them go to graduate from high school and, and go to college and, you know, and, and maybe see them get the job of their dreams and, and see them, uh, you know, just see them succeed in life and get married and, and have kids. Those are gain goals. Those are goals that are going to keep you going no matter what. You know, you want to be around for your husband or your wife. You want to be able to do things. You want to be able to get from life, not just get through life. You know, here's, and here's the way you're going to do. Once you have the goal, you have to visualize what good will come when your goals and desires are met. You have to picture yourself. What does it feel like? How are you going to feel? How much energy are you going to have? What does it look like? How are you going to look when you're fitting in that clothes? And you're, and you're wearing the clothes that you've always wanted to wear that you saw hanging on the rack that you always wanted to wear, but you could never wear because you didn't have the shape. You weren't in shape to do it. It also has something, it, it also helps to have something simple, tangible, and positive to repeat yourself to yourself over and over again. I will be healthy. I am at my ideal weight. I am able to run a 5K because I'm healthy and strong. I am able to run around with my grandchildren and my kids. I am able to, to get a few hours sleep and get up ready to go and see what I can get from life from the day instead of just getting through it. See, that's not only positive reinforcement, but it's a, a quantifiable goal that you can check in on and make your reality. You can actually make it real. Number two is you got to write it down. Write down your goals and outline the small manageable steps you'll need in order to, to, in order to achieve them. If you set a big goal to live a healthy lifestyle or lose weight without a step-by-step -step plan, it can become overwhelming and trigger frustration, negative thoughts, and, they just get, and they'll just get in the way of your success. But by planning and, and accomplishing one small thing at a time, you'll stay on track, focused and positive. But here's, here's what I want, I want to share this with you. If, you, if you, you have to make small changes often. You know, if you're somebody that drinks soda every day, if you're somebody that smokes every day, if you're somebody that stops at the junk food place every day, if you're somebody that, that just, you know, spends so much time watching TV, if you're somebody that doesn't read at all, doesn't feed your mind, and you say the first of the year, I'm going to start, I'm going to cut all those things out. Well, what's going to happen is it's going to lead to frustration because you can't do all those things at once. You know, the reason why a lion, a lion tamer holds the chair with the four legs facing the lion isn't because the chair is going to protect the, li the lion tamer. is isn't because the lion's afraid of the chair. It's because the lion can't focus on four things at once, and it freezes them. And it's the same thing with us. Sometimes if we try to put too many goals, change too many things at once, we fail because we get frustrated. We're like the lion. We freeze, and then we blame ourselves, and then we just think it's not for us, and we weren't made to be healthy, and we weren't made to be... Uh, you know, have a bunch of energy and, and look fit and we give up. So here's what I want you to do is I want you to make a small change and then make another small change and another small change and making small changes often over a period of time will get you to the results you want and you won't even realize that you got there. The third thing you have to do is you got to make time. You're going to have to make some changes. Maybe it's going to be get up early. Maybe it's going to get to bed a little bit later. You're just going to have to make time. You're going to have to, you have to be sure to set aside ample time for yourself to achieve your goals. If you really want to eat healthier, you might have to set aside a couple hours a week to meal prep and plan one day every, every month to track your progress. So it might mean 
skipping going out to eat or, or, or getting up an hour early so you can get your meals together for the week or at least half the week and then you do it again at, towards the middle of the week and you'll get done it and you'll finish off the week strong. Hey, if you want to exercise more, plot out time in your weekly schedule to run and, and time at the gym. You know, you might have to skip your favorite soap opera. You might have to skip your favorite reality, reality TV show. Because here's what I want you to realize. You've got to make changes. And sitting in front of the TV isn't going to make the change. Isn't going to change a thing. Those people on TV aren't going to help you lose weight. Those, look, at, you can look at all those people that are, you know, the beach body people all day long. It's not going to change. That's not going to make you change. You have to get up. You have to go to the gym. You have to make the commitment. Get up an hour earlier. Skip to bed an hour later. Whatever it takes. You have to do it. You know, if you, if you want to feed your mind and, and create a mind shift, you have to schedule time every day to read or listen to something that will change your thinking. Most people, when they get out of high school, never read a book. You're going to have to make some changes. You're going to have to start every morning, get up 15 minutes early and just listen to something positive. Put some positive thinking in your mind. Number four, you're going to move past self-doubt. Keep tabs on how, how often you unset your goals with your thoughts. Pay attention to your self-sabotaging mind chatter. Like, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. This is too hard. This wasn't for me. Stop beating yourself up. But you have to catch yourself doing it. See, every thought you have is an intention. It's normal to feel fear, doubt, and worry. But to make progress, it's important to move past those negative feelings. And only you can do that. I can't do it for you. Nobody can do it for you. Only you can. But I know I'm telling you right now that you are good enough. You do have what it takes to reach your goals. You do have what it takes to lose weight. You do have what it takes to leave a, live a healthy lifestyle. You do have what it takes to make the positive changes in your life that could change the quality of your life forever. But I can't do it for you. You have to believe it yourself. You know, if you find negative thoughts surfacing, don't criticize yourself. But stay in control. If your thoughts don't support you and your goals, let them go. If they're not doing you any good, replace them with your positive mantra. You know, I am healthy. I am strong. I am powerful. I am confident. Whatever it is, whatever you use, because here's what I'm going to tell you. You can't have a negative thought as a, and a positive thought at the same time. But most of the self-chatter we tell ourselves is negative. Most of the people that we hang around with are negative. Most of the stuff you hear on the, on the TV and the radio and the music, it's all negative. So you have to make a conscious effort to replace everything with a positive, positive thinking. And it's going to take time. Fifth thing you got to do is get a partner. Having a group, a partner, a friend, professional to encourage you can be a great way to keep you going. Sometimes, you know, going to the gym, I've been going to the gym for years, and, and I know whenever I've had a training partner, I've always been out to do more weight. I've always showed up even when I haven't felt like going because when, when you don't feel like going, your partner will keep you going. And when they don't feel like doing it, you'll keep them going. And between the two of you, you can help each other accomplish what you want because you both care about, you care about each other or the group that you're in. Like I said earlier, try finding a friend who has a similar resolution and check in with each other every week or every day if you have to to talk about your progress and your challenges. Or ask a family member or a significant other to keep you, keep you accountable. And like I said earlier, just make sure they're supportive and positive. You don't want to go to somebody negative that said, I oh, want you to give up. It's not for you. You know, sometimes you can seek professional help, 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 whether there's a personal trainer to go to. Sometimes personal trainers are great to help you meet your, your fitness goals or a counselor who can help you tackle your larger looming issues such as low self-confidence or lack of direction. Listen, ask for help not because you're a weak. Ask for help because you want to remain strong. Sometimes you can't do it by yourself. Sometimes you need the help. Sometimes if you've never done it before, you don't know how to do it. And you don't know what you don't know. But if you work with somebody, they'll help you. Especially if they want to see you succeed. Especially if they care. Listen, if you're dealing with issues of self-doubt, these can seriously get in the way of, of meeting your, your other goals. So do yourself a favor. Address these issues head on. Don't try to hide them. And number six, be still. You know, you're most likely to slip on your goals when you're stressed or overwhelmed. So spend time every day getting out of your thoughts and reconnecting with yourself. Try breathing exercises, meditation, yoga, just something to get your, get your, help your body relax. Just go on for a walk. You know, and the more practice you have, being still and calm, 
the more present you'll be for each step of achieving your goals. So here's what I want to share with you guys. I'm going to go over them one more time. You might want to write these down because here's what you want to remember. The, the pencil is the recorder of the mind. So write them down, and here they are. Number one, get specific. Number two, write it down. Number three, make time. Number four, move past your doubts. Number five, get a partner. And number six, be still. Setting and reaching goals isn't about willpower. It's about the power of your intention. Once you've mastered these few steps, you'll be well equipped to follow through on your resolutions, this time for good. So listen, my name's Coach Rowe. Here's what I want you to do. Please share and like this. Share it. Maybe share with people that you know are going through some struggles and you know they're going to start their resolutions. You can start them now. Now is the first day of the rest of your life. Never mind January 1st. Go and start January 1st strong, already a couple months ahead of the game. And if you have a question, if you want to talk, feel free to click on the link in the, in the, on the uh, calendar in the comments. Set a time and I'll be happy to give you a call. See if I, can, if I can guide you and direct you in any way. Listen, my name's Coach Rowe and here's what I know. I'm on a mission to help people create a positive mind shift and change the wellness of millions of people around the world. And I got to do it with, I want to do it for the one. I want to do it for a handful of people that I know if I can impact them, I can make all the difference in the world. So here's what I want to do. I want to thank you guys. I appreciate you all for being on. Take control of your life because nobody's going to do it for you. And make it the best night, best life you've ever had because it's the only one you'll ever get. God bless you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great night. Thank you.